December 11th, 2023 at 615. And welcome to the select board meeting, Town of Rochester. Uh, we're going to start the meeting with uh, making sure we conform to the open meeting block. And our agenda has been posted in three places around town on the website. I saw that. Yep. And it was emailed to a list of interested parties. Mm -hmm. So we're all conforming. We're going to proceed with the meeting. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the prior meeting minutes from November 27th, 2023. I have read them over. Um, do you have any questions? No, I read them and that's fine. And here's what I can say. <clears throat> All good. So I can't see the picture. I move to accept the meeting minutes I as written. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. We are going to move on to new business now. And uh, first thing on our list for new, new business is inclusion, declaration, discussion. Do we have a Norman Cohen and an Al Wakefield on Zoom? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Good oh, evening. great. So um, we have considered this once before. Um, do you want to elaborate on what maybe has happened in the last couple years? Sure. Um, first of all, thank you uh, for having us and giving us some time. And I want to tell you that your website is the easiest one to work with and find the agenda and find the Zoom that I have found in all the work we've done for the last several years. Um, well, thank you. Um, and it's much appreciated. Um, I'm wondering if it would be helpful uh, for me to read the declaration or if everyone has already had a chance to do so. Um, we haven't had a lot of feedback from anyone in our town um, since the first time it was proposed and this time when it's on the agenda. But you can go ahead and read that if you'd like, because I think that was a point last time, and I'd like it to be public knowledge again. Well, thank you very much. It's three very short paragraphs. <clears throat> the town of Rochester condemns racism and welcomes all persons, regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, age or disability or socioeconomic status and wants everyone to feel safe and welcome in our community. As a town, we formally condemn discrimination in all of its forms, commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community, and will strive to ensure all our actions, policies, and operating procedures reflect this commitment. The town of Rochester is and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinions. And thank you. Thank you. Go um, ahead. At this point, um, we have 131 municipalities in the state of Vermont that have adopted the declaration. That amounts to 72 point, those towns contain 72 0.5% of the population of the state of Vermont. And every town, large or small, uh, counts heavily uh, towards this effort. Um, by way of background, this started in um, Franklin, Vermont, passed a declaration of inclusion uh, close to three years ago. And the chair of that select board uh, was a cousin of Bob Harnish of Pittsburgh, Vermont, who is actually the founder of this Declaration of Inclusion Initiative. Um, Bob took it to his town of Pittsford. It was adopted by Pittsford. Brandon adopted it shortly thereafter. And then Bob began to think uh, this had some town or statewide potential, contacted Al Wakefield. Uh, Al subsequently contacted me and we began. And in the last year, we've added two people, Barbara Noyes Pulling uh, of Rutland Town, who is a, uh, was employed by the uh, Rutland Regional Planning Commission, 
but is uh, helping us in her individual capacity and not her uh, professional capacity. And Patty Lancaster of Menden, who just joined us in the last month or so, and will be heading up our effort to implement and help towns implement the Declaration of Inclusion. Um, there are myriad reasons to adopt the Declaration of Inclusion. Basically, the moral and economic reasons are inseparable. Um, economically, uh, CBS a couple of years ago did a, a survey and determined that Vermont was the most desirable state in the country to live in. And it import, but it pointed out its shortcoming shortcoming was diversity. Vermont, we've learned in our work, is the second whitest and the second oldest uh, state in the country. And within the next decade, uh, approximately 100,000 Vermonters will reach retirement age, and we have to replace those employees. Many of our children, including mine, and I'm sure many others, uh, aren't staying here. And we've got to do something to do that. And I think it's proven clear that if you're luring or trying to lure a company to relocate here, we're trying to lower, lower individuals. A company of any size that's going to move here from out of state has a diverse employment and a diverse leadership, diverse leadership. And they're going to look to see how we do, how welcome we are. I am uh, along our path here. I ran into a woman, uh, a gay woman, who told me that the first thing she did when she wanted to relocate here and began looking at jobs was to look at the companies and see what their diversity and inclusion policies are. And that really rang a bell. It told me we're on the right track and we hope you will be too. Uh, Al Wakefield, who is one of the founders along with Bob Harnish, is with me and I'm going to turn it over to him and may have a comment or two after he finishes. Al. Sure, I hear something in the background. I don't know if it's in the uh, meeting itself or in somebody else's uh, that's not muted, but does anybody else hear that? I did. Yeah. Yeah. It's here in the office. We've been trying to work office. on it. Okay. All right. Okay. Just uh, <laughs> just briefly, I, um, thanks, Norm. Um, I've been involved with, with Bob right from the very beginning. And uh, as Norm indicated, uh, you know, we uh, started out with zero and now we're at 131 towns that have adopted. Uh, our hope is that they will continue to think about this and to uh, implement what in adoption uh, implies. And all that's lo laid out in our uh, VT Declaration of Inclusion uh, org uh, uh, website uh, as such. We're supported in this, uh, in this initiative by the Vermont Chamber of Commerce, which has seen it as a business position, necessary uh, business um, uh, situation to to say that inclusion is important to the growth uh, of of Vermont. In fact, it sees it as a vital uh, part of any growth that Vermont sustains over the next ten years or so. But in addition to that, the Vermont Interfaith Action Group, uh, which is a coalition of religious institutions across Vermont, importantly the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, which you I think are a part of greatly supports this and has provided uh, administrative services to us as well as uh, legal services uh, to uh, the Vermont Council, uh, rather, uh, yeah, Council on Re Rural Development also. And in addition to that, and perhaps lastly, the governor has has said that this is important to to uh, Vermont as a function of, of growth over, over time. And in doing so, he supported this initiative by declaring the second week in May as an inclusion week in Vermont and has himself signed a declaration of inclusion for the state of Vermont. Um, I noted that a number of other towns in uh, Windsor County, which you are part, uh, have adopted the declaration, uh, including uh, uh, Randolph, uh, Cavendish, Ludlow, Springfield, Woodstock, Western, Windsor. And I see a gentleman here from uh, from Bethel and uh, we work with Bethel to uh, to get that done in 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 Bethel going back a, a year and a half ago. Or so, and so um, uh, it's important, uh, as as Noam said, morally, uh, spiritually. It's it's a, if 
it, it's important uh, structurally in terms of, of economic growth. We've got to get people from someplace in this state to continue to grow and prosper. And if we don't draw those people from a diverse group, uh, um, uh, we're, we're not going to be able to compete uh, either town against town or state against uh, state or country against against country. And in case somebody uh, feels, as some people have said, well, we've got we don't have that problem here, which I think and, and, and some of you will think is not the way to, to view this. But in case you think that issue doesn't exist here, certainly everybody can go back to. Uh, uh, the three Palestinians uh, uh, attempted murder in Burlington a few weeks ago. And just I'm on the police subcommittee here in Rutland and I was at a subcommittee meeting today. And one of the ladies who looks like she could be uh, from the Middle East, uh, she's not. Um, uh, in fact, just just a few days ago was uh, shouted at and told to go home in downtown Rutland. Uh, and I, yeah, Rutland is is certainly what Rutland is, and I think it's growing and it's changing. But every town of Vermont has that potential for happening. So unless we think that we're immune from racism, as well as all the other, it's not just about race; it's about those other eight categories of marginalized people that you see. And I suspect everybody on this call has somebody in his or her family who's disabled, uh, somebody who's a veteran, somebody who's not quite making it economically all those groups that are encompassed uh, in the decoration. So I urge you to, to, to think about that as you consider, uh, reconsider uh, adoption of the decoration and join the other 131 states, uh, uh, towns rather, that have adopted the decoration. So thank you. Now we wanna thank you for coming forward with your presentation this time around. I don't think we had much more than paperwork the last time. Um, now we have something more to present around to our townspeople and see if we have the sufficient support to make a declaration. I know that as a select board, we do feel as though the state of Vermont accepting the declaration is probably got all of us in Vermont covered. And um, at the time that we first uh, encountered, um, we had decided not to uh, join in with the declaration. Um, so as of right now, uh, we still feel that way, but um, we will have a further discussion with your supporting documentation uh, when we have a full select board. And we will also have uh, a few weeks, perhaps through the holidays, um, to discuss it with people around town and uh, see if, um, if it's something that would be supported. Well, we would, if it comes before the board again, we'd appreciate notice of it so we could be available to answer any questions uh, that may come up. Uh, Absolutely. And, and uh, we thank you for the time and, uh, and for your careful look at it. And as long as we're Vermonters, we, we are have a declaration under the state of Vermont in the meantime. So, <laughs> so yes, thank you. Very well presented. Thank you. Sure. Okay, as so we move on to our number three on our agenda, agenda um, we are reviewing the November treasurer's report. It's getting some meat to it now. We're almost halfway through our year. And um, if if any in, anyone in the town is also reviewing the report, the treasurer's report is a little out of whack and that's because of our West Hill Bridge project. Um, there is a $300,000 overage on that that is responsible for the town. We are going to go for a bond on that. And when that happens, the numbers will fall back in line again. Um, but um, rest assured, we're taking a look at it. How do you feel about it, Frank? Yeah, same here. Okay. Yep. So I move that we accept the treasurer's report for November. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, number four on our list is sign errors and emissions certificate. Um, this is form PBR 4261-E. Um, this is showing changes to the 2023 grand list. And um, these are ones after it has been lodged. So um, okay. we have a list. There's four different properties. Yep. Over. 
There's four different properties and two of the four is a lot line adjustment. Therefore, one property, the value went down, the other property, the value went up. So it's almost a wash. And the other two properties are located up in Greyhawk. Um, and the uh, both properties had acquired a neighboring um, vacant lot to uh, join onto their property. Therefore, the property was adjusted down in value. And so there was nothing unusual there. Um, I moved that we accept the errors and omissions certificate and sign it and get those adjustments done. I second, second that. All in favor? Aye. All right. <clears throat> Quick and easy. We have a very good lister. Board. Love them all. Okay, we'll sign that. We'll be moving on to the regional discussion team proposal to create the position of intermunicipal White River Valley Energy Resilience Coordinator. This is, <laughs> this is a long title. Um, Jeff Gephardt is here and he will be making a presentation along with some folks on Zoom. So if you wanted to take that away, Jeff, it's sure. yours. Um, the board is yours. The presentation itself is going to be uh, provided by uh, Gene Krause, uh, Bethel Select Board member and Energy uh, Committee member. Um, unfortunately, uh, um, Ann Quindig wound up with a conflict and was not able to come tonight. And um, Nicole St. Cyr, who's really done a phenomenal job of leading this uh, analysis uh, and, and um, exploration, um, has resigned this past week and it's a case really a case of burnout mm -hmm. uh, that goes with the extensive volunteerism that uh, she's been doing for so long um, i also though i tried to attend most of the meetings i uh, did not and so my depth of knowledge in this is nowhere near as good as james he's also been to other presentations here where we received questions that uh, probably aren't the answers for which are probably not on the screen here um, but uh, he will know them because of the, the being involved in those those actual meetings so um, one last thing Gene we do not have it set up so we can see um, the screen up on the screen here I will go follow you and, and advance the slides as you go um all right, except I have a different presentation. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> that's all right. We'll, I we'll one go. <laughs> we'll go with the. Go with the flow. We'll go with the flow. We'll go with the flow. Uh, people that have access to a computer there uh, should be able to see if they're logged into Zoom. Uh, the. Uh, but very quickly, I want to. I don't. I want to thank you for uh, giving uh, this task force some uh, time on your agenda. I understand and know personally what a select board meeting is like uh, because I'm on the select board here in Bethel. So I won't take a whole lot of your time. Let me go through this very quickly and then open it for questions. Uh, first of all, we all know that. We know from firsthand experience now of the impact of climate change in our communities. I, I bet you know somebody who is a farmer who had a hard time with the weather this past year. Uh, either too much rain or not enough rain coming at the wrong times uh, made it really hard for our agricultural sector. We had storms, uh, as you know, and I know, and that uh, bridge or that uh, pro project that you mentioned a moment ago uh, may in fact have been part of that. I have a daughter who has asthma and she was not able to go on her daily runs at times during this summer because of her asthma, because of the wildfires out west. Uh, the the many people here, right here in Vermont, uh, experienced the negative health impacts of uh, of that climate issue, and uh, we've all known uh, that we've had flooding. Um, 
my guess is that you as select board members have dealt with more than you share of uh, road issues and expenses and tried to find dollars when you didn't have them uh, in order to deal with uh, what the, those storms did. In yes. response, <laughs> you did, I'm sure you did. Uh, the, uh, for the past six months, a number of White River Valley towns have been coming together with representatives to try and figure out how we can address climate change in our small towns, uh, because we have, we can do what we can do, but we can't do any more. And the, the possibility of doing anything requires, uh, in our opinion, uh, some additional help. None of us have the expertise, the training, or the knowledge to be able to uh, address climate uh, in all fullness and all of its uh, ramifications. The towns who participated range from Brookfield to West Fairley and from Chelsea up to Hancock. And Rochester is one of those. You said a representative, Jeff, and uh, the group was uh, facilitated by a grant from the Vermont Council on Rural Development uh, through Vital Communities. They assisted and facilitated in, in the process, facilitated us, and we received a good deal of technical advice and counsel from Two Rivers Otakwichi. The, the, the energy coordinator that we are proposing will do half a dozen things. One, the, he, he or she will assist in prioritizing energy, resilience, and climate planning uh, for your town and for the whole region of those towns served. That person will be established collaborative late relationships between the select boards, nonprofit organizations, residents in our towns. That person will uh, facilitate the tracking of energy usage and greenhouse gas emissions uh, in our specific towns so that uh, that information can be used for the next thing that the person will do, which is that person will be a grant writer uh, to write and prepare grants for us, uh, bring that kind of expertise and skill as well. And that person will work with a steering committee of those towns that choose to participate. Uh, that steering committee and uh, two rivers will uh, coordinate and, and manage the project. This involves not just the town, but your schools and uh, the uh, impact that climate change is having on those facilities as well as uh, the town facilities. And there will be regular reporting to uh, the citizens. So those are the things we have asked that person to do. Let me share a couple more details about the proposal. One is that is it is a shared proposal among the participating towns. The cost will be distributed according to the adjusted Vermont town brand list for the towns so that we're uh, trying to find a way to uh, recognize that some of our communities are larger than others. For example, Randolph versus Pittsfield. Yeah, you, the two towns you know that are of different sizes. We will also uh, be, uh, the person will not simply be working for individual towns, but will be working for the region. And we'll get into that in a little more depth in a minute. There will be a steering committee that will work with Two Rivers Otakwichi 
Two Rivers will be the employer and will provide day-to-day -day supervision and accountability for our employee, although that employee will not be housed at the Two Rivers office. The reason for that is that the uh, if the person were to be housed at Two Rivers, Two Rivers would uh, charge us 80% of the salary and benefits for the individual. If we house the individual at, uh, in one of our towns, uh, that individual, Two Rivers will charge us 10%. So we thought that it was uh, a cost-effective way to receive uh, the, the, the oversight from Two Rivers while at the same time having more money go into uh, actually delivering service to our communities. And the town share, uh, you may have in your, uh, the, we did an estimate because some of the towns were more involved with this, the planning committee than others. And we're here today to try to figure out who it is who really wants to participate going forward. Those towns uh, include Bethel, Braintree, Brookfield, Pittsfield, Randolph, Rochester, and Royalton. And using the grand list uh, as a, uh, a as a as a tool uh, we estimate that the cost for the town of Rochester would be for the first year ten thousand one hundred and seventy four dollars so you might want to write that down for the yes. second year $10,174. For the second year, that cost would increase to $13,675. Now, the reason for the change is that during the first year, we are able to call this a pilot project. And we are able to do this uh, with support from MERP funds. A number of the communities have said that in participating, they would contribute their $4,000 initial grant from uh, MERP uh, toward this project, thus reducing the cost for the pilot project. The pilot will then help us determine uh, the future of the project and the viability of the, the uh, piece. Once we have uh, the interested towns clearly identified, in other words, they've said, we're good, we're, we want to be part of this, uh, we will be able to finalize those numbers because it is based on who's actually taking part. Uh, <clears throat> three, a few things that we believe are really good deliverables. One, it enables us to have staff at a cost that is not borne by any single town. Rochester would not have to pay the $150,000 necessary for salary benefits and, and all the rest uh, that would be required. Instead, that cost is shared and there will be savings, although we have no idea what theirs will be. Uh, I will simply share that one resident here in Bethel uh, and lives in town has been able to, uh, with solar panels and uh, tightening weatherization in his house and uh, so on, is right, right now is looking at a heating bill of about $300 a year in Bethel, uh, and that's not a tiny house. So the mm -hmm. fact is that those who act on climate change save money, uh, whether it's individual or a town. This, the, a second deliverable is that this 
staff person will devote all of his or her time on this issue. How can we be more resilient? How can we use energy wisely? Uh, and how can we reduce our greenhouse gases? They won't be distracted the next time a storm comes and everybody's running around trying to figure out how to, to fix the roads. They will be devoted, uh, and uh, for the town of Rochester, I understand that's uh, that's an addition to your staff that uh, that is right now small, and my guess is out straight, uh, stretched, and uh, perhaps overworked. I know that's the case here in Bethel, and we have more staff probably than you do. We will have a person who has expertise in climate and energy. Uh, under, I'm, I'm a person who tries to understand that in those details. And I really appreciate uh, the effort that goes into understanding all the science and all the technical kinds of stuff that goes into it, what works, what doesn't work, and so on and so forth. So having somebody available in addition to Jeff, uh, to uh, to guide you through that uh, maze of information uh, will be a great asset. That person will also have knowledge about the grants and the and resources that are available. Both the state of Vermont and the federal dollars are increasingly uh, coming available. And we don't want, frankly, we don't want to leave money sitting on the shelf uh, when we could put it to use in our communities. And then the, the other benefit is that by <clears throat> reaching out over a wider area, we have as many, a population as high as maybe 20,000 from which to draw volunteers. And this person will help us draw volunteers to serve each individual town, but to do that regionally and provide volunteer support in terms of knowledge and, and uh, expertise and all of the things that are necessary in order to uh, make this happen. We're asking for something very simple we're asking Rochester Select Board to consider becoming one of the participating towns. This is not a final decision. We're asking you for a tentative approval so that we can uh, firm up who, what towns are going to be participating and then come back to you with uh, final uh, numbers distributed according to who takes part. The, there are towns that have uh, voted enthusiastically to move forward, others that continue to ask questions and we're trying to answer them. You can, we're asking that you could consider uh, putting this in your 2024-25 budget or uh, putting it into your uh, town meeting as a special item uh, that the village, the town might uh, consider. Uh, my guess is because we have gone through the summer we just did, there is a great mo great deal more interest in our towns than there might have been before uh, in taking some sort of action such as this. Once we know who what towns are participating, we'll get back to you. And once we know what towns are participating, we will be prepared to uh, come to you either in informational meetings prior to your town meeting or to the town meeting itself uh, to uh, share and present a more detailed proposal and answer questions. That's what I have to say. Uh, and let me open it up and say, are there questions that you have? I know I covered a lot of ground and covered it quickly. I've got a, a couple of things that I'd like to say. Um, first and foremost, uh, I'm retired and I don't want this job. <laughs> <laughs> 
I do plan to continue at the board's pleasure as a volunteer assisting in this whole effort. Um, but I do not want to be paid nor have the responsibility of a full-time job, particularly a regional job. Um, you know, right now you do have me for free. Um, I don't think that I'm being as effective as we could through this whole process. Um, but the other thing we're talking about is a significant reordering of our civilization, frankly. And we have goals that uh, run us up to 2050. Um, I've got a few years to help volunteer on all of this, but I doubt I'm going to make that 2050 goal to, <laughs> to see 90% of our energy be uh, renewable at that point. So you may have the cow now and the milk, but uh, at some point, you know, there won't be a volunteer that has the background that I have. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, so I would be pleased to continue as a volunteer energy coordinator in Rochester or by some other name, whatever would work if that is, you know, what the board would like. Um, of the things that the are the responsibility of a regional um, energy coordinator um, or, or actually of the town, uh, there is the steering committee. I could serve on that steering committee on your behalf if you want. Uh, I could support the tracking of Rochester's energy use. I'm already doing it. It'd be very easy to get that over into, into the coordinator's hand. Um, I think that uh, the coordinator and I have a lot of would, would have a lot of similar background or skills, but one of the things that I'm probably ahead of most folks on because of 20 years of work in that area is understanding the best practices for rehabbing buildings and we have buildings to rehab. Um, what I think this could also do is help us with grant applications. That's not something I'm real good at other than providing some of the, the fill in the blank mm -hmm. stuff. Um, and it's something that I actually dislike a lot. <laughs> Um, I think that this would enable us locally and, and me to out increase project outreach and education within the local community, um, getting in more tabling events, developing a website, um, getting more weatherization on track, heat pumps, all house electrification, transfer, uh, transportation electrification, all of those kinds of things in support of this regional coordinator. Um, so that's out there. Oh, well, that's good. Um, go ahead. If I may, I'd like to share some of um, what I thought about the slides and the presentation that I previously saw on the slide set. Mm -hmm. And I just jotted down a couple of notes, so bear with me. Yeah, <laughs> we're fine. Rochester is, is on the... Oh, oh Diane know. Tietzel. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rochester is on the Vermont Agency of Administration pre-approved list, as are a number of these other towns for municipal technical assistance, meaning that this program, the Municipal Technical Assistance Program, will assist small towns assessing state and federal resources based on a town's need for investment and capacity for pursuing assistance. My vote is yes to the regional energy coordinator. Why? He or she could work with this new program to assess and access these state and federal funds for multiple towns, working with these specialists to develop and coordinate projects on a larger scale and become more time efficient, no duplication of effort. Time saving. Communication goes through one person freeing up time for all the participating towns and select boards. And I mentioned this because I know in 2024, there'll be a vote for Rochester about the building, the high school building. And should the town decide to, uh, if the vote is yes for the town to buy it, that's another thing that will be on your plate. So again, this would free up more time for the select board. Finally, energy costs are rising. Climate change is happening with more and frequent, more intense storms coming our way. And more regulations are being made in response to climate change. 
All these reasons are why I think Rochester and the Rochester Select Board should participate. Thank you. So noted. Um, I think the presentation was very good. I usually um, come at somebody with who, what, why, when, and where. Um, the basics, and you did cover that. Um, so I, I thank you for being very conclusive in, in covering everything. Uh, the one question I have, um, I believe embedded in, in what you were saying was that this position is costing 150,000 a year. Is that correct? Did I, did I hear that correctly? That's, yeah, that's in the ballpark. It's, uh, well, wait a minute. We budgeted a hundred and a quarter, hundred and twenty-five, okay. and that includes the ten percent for uh, T. Rourke. So that's salary benefits and some administrative costs as well. Uh, we're advised by Two Rivers that that's that's a doable. Uh, piece and that is uh, a p uh, there are people out there that are will ready willing and able to uh, take on that responsibility okay so what, I just wanted that to be clear and then the following year it would still be the same amount of money relatively speaking uh, it's just the funding will change the, the funding would change because we would no longer be a pilot project eligible for yeah. MERP funds. I have to be pretty accurate when I go before the Budget and Finance Committee with this. No, absolutely. <laughs> Which is what our next step would be, um, unless we have more feedback from anyone. I, I think this is something that should be put before the town. <clears throat> quite frankly, through an article through the town meeting, it should be addressed that way, and the presentation should be made to the to the community, not so much to them, and not leaving it on the board's hands to decide a financial place for that. And because it is a growing issue that we we need to address, and I agree with that, <clears throat> but I do think it requires a a town vote on something like that. Go ahead, Nancy. Is it too late? No, I don't think it's too late I, because it is a money option and you know how our budget is this year. It's going to be I've heard. tested. Mm -hmm. So um, I I think it should be something that should be put before the town. I have a question. Yes. Many grant writers write their salary into the grants that they're writing to represent. We're hoping yeah. to get. And is that a consideration with this position? or this person? That would be. Did you hear that? I did. Uh, and the answer is yes, <clears throat> that is a possibility. There are also grants to hire grant writers <laughs> that we would <laughs> uh, uh, may be able to leverage, not just for the writing of the grant, but also for the managing and implementing of grants that may be <clears throat> uh, granted, may be allotted. Uh, so again, this is this is something that has the potential of uh, not only providing additional revenue to meet some of these needs, but also to pay for the position itself uh, down the road. No promises. I want to be clear about that. So we would be asking the town to uh, commit to that that base level. Now, if we don't need it, wonderful. If it comes in in another way, that would be great. Uh, that's a bonus. The other thing I would I didn't say there is also room in this for reaching out to individuals in the community to assist them with weatherization, heat pumps, and taking action in their position, their own uh, lives uh, relative to uh, climate. That will save your citizens money as well. Okay, thank Would you. you. like us to speak 
to both the budget committee and to do something at the town meeting? Um, I think at town meeting would be a better way to go myself. I mean, I, I, the, the budgets this year are, are going to be tough if, if you haven't heard already, but everybody is, uh, is clamoring for money this year and, and costs are increasing everywhere. So the budget's going to be tight. <clears throat> and personally, I think it's a decision that the town should make, not just three people on the select board to initially go out on the limb and say, this is what we should do as, as um, to start spending money on. Not that I'm against the project. I'm just thinking that it should be a, a town vote, not necessarily a, a three person board vote. That's my own personal feeling, but sure. I don't know how Pat feels, but um, I, I, I agree. Feel. I agree. I think that's the best play here. I mean, we're starting to build something and I, I totally agree that I think it's necessary and I think it's a direction we need to move in. But I think we need to have support from the community to do that. And we can support it as a board, but if the community's not supporting it, I think that's a, an issue that we have to address. Understood. And I uh, think it was 2018, at the end of our town meeting, um, we voted to take climate change into account in every decision that we make. And I keep that close by. So um, I think there's a good possibility of support from the town for that. I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, if, if we did the presentation to the budget committee, then they could give you their thoughts on it as well as to the town when the, you know, with that's where you want the final decision made. Well, I think, I think the way we presented is an article in, in the town meeting Right. and have a voting amount we have to be put into a budget with that article. And we can do that. I believe we have the right to put that in as an article as a as a board. So yes. we can <laughs> yes. that that way. <clears throat> and I think that's probably the best way to address it. And then you can present the the things that you need to present then and support that and we'll go from there. I, I feel that that's probably the best way to address it. And the board would be willing to and, put that article on the agenda without a petition from yes, in advance. Yeah, it's an article coming from the board, whether or not it's a it's a financial decision for the community moving forward. So I, it's it's in our best interest as a board to present it to the community and let the community make that decision. And I think makes that's a lot of sense. Should, that's the way we should. That makes a it. lot. <laughs> We can help with that in whatever way uh, possible. Uh, with uh, I'm hearing support from the two board members that I see, uh, so you may want to even recommend it to the town. Uh, but that's I'll leave that to you. Uh, that's another possibility. But we'll help with that with in whatever way we can. You're making. Okay. That's the kind of sense that that uh, I understand completely as a select board member here in in Bethel. Yeah. A question about going that way would then would a meeting be called for a slide presentation then to the public so they can learn about this article as a yes no and and promote it or not promote it. So they can learn about the process before town meeting day. Well, we have pre-town meeting. Mm -hmm. So at pre-town so meeting, that would occur. That would normally be the, the could, outlet for that. Yeah, and also uh, some literature going forward would be a way to do that too. Um, and we we can put that out. Pretty so, much. For the <laughs> articles, you normally have a little paragraph or two, or sometimes a whole darn page where you depends on what it is. Right, mm -hmm. and we can add we can add something to the to the town report that way too. Right, because we we got a pretty depth. Um, you, you write an article anyway, page. don't you? Have a presentation page in the in the town yeah, report anyway, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can yeah. address that, and you can address it as an article 
in the town meeting itself. So and perhaps Martha can mention it in the paper. In the paper. And, and if someone was interested, they could stop by and grab the presentation and paper. Are they have they been asked to submit a report to the town report with this? Uh the energy yes. I not with not with uh, not with it. I have in prior years, I would anticipate it. Um Julie sent out something to everybody that she's looking to for reports from. Right. Did you get department? Did you send one to Jeff? I sent one to Jeff, yes. Yeah. So Jeff for the part for the part department report. Okay, I'll check. But if you can address it that way if you want. And then we'd, we'd also be come up for discussion at the meeting anyway. Yeah, we can go from there. I think that's the best way to deal with it going forward. <clears throat> Personally, but yeah. Okay. Well, that's why there's pre town meeting. They can come to pre town meeting and it can be openly discussed. Every article gets mm -hmm. discussed. Mm -hmm. But if it's all written in the town report, too, in your report, mm -hmm. They will have that in advance as well. Learning about it and asking mm -hmm. questions. Okay. Let's other, see what we can pull together. One other thing to point out, I think I've notified people, but last uh, last week, we the uh, Resiliency Island or the microgrid uh, got its certificate of public good. Right. So we've so got that. the energy coordinator report covered now. <laughs> So that will be proceeding in the spring? Yeah. Or when? Perfect. Well, they, as soon as Green Mountain Power gets the poles all cut over and all that. <laughs> okay. <Later laughs> that will be a spring. while. And window so. dresses a huge success. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. There was a lot so of publicity. I, so I'm, go I'm going to leave, but I want to say uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, give us a chance to make our pitch. We well, appreciate thank you it. Thank you very much. Yep. yep. All right. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good presentation. I don't know what it is. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we, the next order of business is what we're going to do. Well, the office is, the, the town office is going to be closed to the public from January, uh, December 26th to January 2nd, reopening on January 3rd, okay? So um, uh, not open to the public for the holidays. Um, I'll be doing inside work, preparing for the new year. <laughs> and so um, the next thing that we need to discuss about that time era is um, our next select board meeting is scheduled for December 25th. <laughs> and we all anticipate to be a little hungry, fat, tired on that evening. So we probably don't want to be meeting. Um, Doesn't sound like we want to meet January 1st either. <laughs> no, we're the second Monday. It would be January. If you drink, it might be a little <laughs> yeah, longer. We don't want to move it to another Monday. Um, open for suggestions. Um, do, do we skip that particular meeting? Do we reschedule it? I know the 26th, I believe, is a uh, fire department work meeting night is that true we're not we actually canceled that for this month well i I, they, our, did. I don't see why we can't i think it depends on what our schedule is how do how we wind up for we what? just our biggest thing is getting bills paid and you know doing that type of thing so we oh. just we would need to get together at some point that week before would um, it be better before say we did it on the, a, the 18th sometime to just um even if we do like a special meeting just to pay bills. So what if we did like the 21st on a Thursday? Would that work for mm -hmm. you? I mean, that gives us a little bit closer. And would you like that a special meeting at a certain time? Uh, we, yeah, we can just do a special meeting and, and have it at a, you know, five o'clock or something like that. Okay. Uh, just to get it going. So Thursday, and, December. So do we have to and keep a slim agenda as possible. Yeah. Possibly, uh, you know, we need to make sure we've finalized the everything for the the printing of the 
we have when do we have to have that done? You're not going there yet. No. No. January. <laughs> yeah, uh, no. Is there is there some timeline no, here we need to follow? I know. But, yeah. So but, we're yeah. proposing to move the regular select board meeting from December 25th at 6:15 to December 21st at 5 p.m. That sounds good to me. Second. Second. In favor? All right. Martha is waving her little hand right <laughs> off. I just wondered if um, I'm assuming, Julie, that you'll send out um, a, a notice about this with a little Zoom thingy for me to click on, et cetera, and for other people. Yes. Okay, yes. so Thursday the 21st at 5 o'clock. As a warned meeting. It'll be a warned meeting, just yep. like our regular okay, great. every other week meeting. So I'll mention it in my article. Yes, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to department reports, which I think we're going to run through that pretty quick. Is anyone on board for the library? Not on ORCA. No? No. Okay. Highway department? Uh, about the only thing I think we cleaned up the, with the state as far as, uh, and probably Kristen's going to mentioned that through our grant updates, but with uh, the West Hill Bridge, we finalized mm -hmm. the paperwork on that for the state. So we should be receiving some funds from them shortly. Uh, I think probably mm -hmm. Kristen might be addressing that. Or were you going to address that, Kristen? Okay. Yeah, you just did. Yeah, but you know, I didn't give any numbers. I don't have any. And um, yeah, the truck okay. that was broken on our last meeting is back it, on the road. It is again. back on the road. So hopefully I didn't hear anything today. So they were a little nervous about plowing roads where they're not frozen. And I don't blame them. It's tough. Hired on equipment. Martha. Sorry, I just just a road related question because I've had several people in the when I was in the post office the other day ask me this question if I knew when Bethel Mountain Road would open, do you have any idea? Has anybody said anything to you about how, you know, that project is going and if there's an estimated open date? The last like I... the New Year's resolution thing. We're looking <laughs> into January. Yeah. They, last no, I heard it was the middle of the month, but I think that's going to no, be moved on. It's January. Is it January? Well, the more we know, we'll keep you posted. So right. I should I could mention that that it's estimated to be January in the article or not? It should it's be. definitely going to be January. We just don't have any idea right now of what when in January the first okay. or the third. Okay, thank you. That's a tough one. Yeah, they're pouring walls, hip balls. Yeah, they're having a hard time. Yeah, it's a tough time to be working. Well, it's a it's a. Ooh, I was worried about that when they decided they were going to do it. Yeah. But. Um, we do not have Terry here for utilities. We heard from Jeff and all we have left is grant updates. Okay. All I have is on, um, Monday, the 4th, I sent in our reimbursement for the park tree grant and, um, we received that on the 8th. So we're all closed out and good with that. That was awesome and easy to work with. And also on the 4th, um, as Frank mentioned, I submitted reimbursement of 175000 for the West Hill Bridge um, on the structures grant that we've had. And I'm working very closely right now on the flat grant. Um, there's a little bit of confusion. We were granted $600,000. 340 of it was dedicated for construction and 260 was dedicated for design. Oh. Um, so they're gonna give us that money, but they're having to refinagle everything. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll take, that's a process, I guess, so like a two week process and they started it today. So I've requested, I've put in the invoice for the 340,000. Um, they're hoping to release that next week. So that's where we're at. Sounds moving good. along, thank yep. you. Thank you for moving things along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. totally. Do we have anyone here that has any public comment? I don't think we have any old business. Anything to say on Zoom? I don't see any hands raised in Zoom. Going once, twice. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Mm -hmm.